Welcome to part one of our road trip. Tomorrow we go to the commercial vehicle show, then we head to Hampton Court to Concord. Then we're going to head up to Stevenage, meet up with Joseph and head to the Buntingford Classic Car Show. They shut down the village so that should be quite an interesting one. And then finally we're going to visit Salon Privé at Blenheim Palace. Welcome aboard the Autumn Tour for Planet Auto. Before we zip off on our adventures I'll tell you a little bit about the car. So yes, you've seen the Kia Nero on the channel before, but this is a hybrid one. And it's, I suppose, what you call classic hybrid, meaning you don't need to charge it. But it's a perfect vehicle for motorways and A-roads as well. So you've got an electric motor and a petrol engine. Now the interesting thing about this car is, when we're travelling along the motorway and start slowing down and getting into traffic and so on, it will switch to electric, so it'll be the perfect economising car. Let's go! Now this is in trim 2. Now interestingly, on the Nero, there is no trim 1, so it's actually bottom of the range, but you still get things like adaptive cruise control. Also, no keyless go, so I actually have to put a key in and turn it. How old school. Okay, looks like it's going to let us pull away in electric. See you on the other side. Oh, petrol. Looks like we can set off in electric now. Nope, petrol. Obviously needs to charge a bit. Interesting engine tone. See you later. So we're off on our adventures. We have 470 miles of range. Now ideally I don't want to put any fuel in this, so it'll be interesting to see if we can do our journeys on that. I suppose it depends on traffic, and it depends on how I drive primarily. We know that doesn't normally go well. I enjoy myself, I'm just not the most economical driver. Just in case anyone's wondering. I'll have to put the window up on about because nobody's actually going to hear you. I'm not going to be on this section because I'm covering from a very nasty bug and I look like death and this is as loud as I can go right now. So I can vouch for that. Uh, Sorry, I'm so cruel. I'm Cruella Deville. This is me now, so I'm behind the camera but you're not going to see me or hear me for a little while. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry, Annabelle, could you repeat that? Sorry about that, folks. So we're leaving Silverdale at 40 miles per hour, and they've shut the crag, which means we have to use the Yellen Road to get to the A6. Lovely. The biggest benefit of the Nero is the fact is I'm travelling along between 25 and 30 miles an hour on these back roads, and I'm now in EV mode. Which means I'm not blazing any of my MPG for petrol, which is good. Because they've shut the crack, they've made this pretty challenging. Everything's been diverted through Yelland. Believe it or not, this is actually where the 40 foot has come to deliver some of our cars. Because it's the only way to get to Silverdale. There's a simplicity to driving this. It's comfortable, the suspension feels good. It's not too wide. But it's still roomy enough as well. It's, um, it's an interesting one. I mean, as we know, SUVs are a big part of the world today. And they outsell pretty much every category of vehicle by some ridiculous amount. That's why you see people like Aston Martin creating things like the DBX, because they know supercars aren't really going to sell as well as, say, an SUV. But the likes of Kia other Korean brands have been doing things with SUVs for many many years so they're quite adept at making them they've also had the technologies quite a while as well we're about to enter the A6 and then we'll jump on the M6 and then straight down to the NEC this is oh clear Yep, bit of a rapid escape there, but it looked like the Merc was going to try and launch over the junction. <laughs> I suppose that answers my, my next point. 
Is it quick? Well, not really, but if you put your foot down it, down. Aye, Scottish. <laughs> it can lurch. <laughs> we've just checked the M6, and it says heavier than normal traffic. Great. Even the A6 looks snarled up. If we have a quick look at the cluster now, it now says 460 miles of range, but that's not surprising. I have been flooring it and having a bit of fun. But when I get onto the motorway and get up to about 70 miles an hour, I think we'll start economising. According to this, it's in eco. Now, does that imply there's driving modes? The other great thing about the Kia is when you go to the home screen here and you press hybrid, you can see all the information what your car's doing. So we're averaging 54.9 to the gallon. Electric motor use, 9.3 kilowatts. Steering's nice and smooth. Good feedback and weighting's up nicely on the back road as well. This is where Annabelle would be saying it's nice and comfortable as a passenger. As we know, now we've got some road noise, you just won't hear it. It's an impressive place to be. Great visibility. Not really a blind spot with this B pillar. You can also get things like blind spot detection. And that's the thing about Kia, full of safety. Anyway, let's join the M6 and then we'll give you an update around 100 miles and see how economical I'm actually being. As this is a hybrid, it's got regenerative braking. It's got about three or four modes. You operate those with the paddles on the back of the steering wheel. We're going to keep it in the lightest for the time being because we're joining the motorway. Right, let's just floor it for fun. Okay, we're going to have to back off because there is no way I'm going to get in front of that. So yes, it will join. <laughs> well, all the safety is going crazy. <laughs> So you've, you've definitely got overwatch, so that's a good thing. From launch up to about 30, 40 miles an hour, it's not bad at all. Right, we'll check back in with you around 100 miles, which I expect will be near Sandbach. Well, the M6 is somewhat busy. We've just got down to the Tickle Trout. Now the one thing I have noticed is there's quite a bit of tyre noise, but it's only on these like really, really bad bits of motorway. When you get on a bit of a smooth tarmac, it's almost silent. So it's quite well refined in here. We just need to sort out our roads, don't we, Britain? This is interesting. We're traveling along at 65 miles an hour and we're in electric mode. Ooh. And we're still averaging 54.4 mpg. So it's kind of hovering ever so slightly, but that's the benefit with an electric motor and a petrol engine. It just makes it economical. Ah, look. And about pans around now, you will see that the M6 has come to a halt. Lovely. Getting to the NEC is not going to be quite as easy as we first thought. My word, there's something upside down on the oh, other carriageway. Something's crushed over us. Yeah, there's something crossed the actual... Luckily, if we get Central past reservation. this now, we'll be able to get there before they shut this down to move it, I think. It's... That's awful. Yeah, that's not good. And the police are on it. Oof. Not a nice experience. However, it does look like the vehicle cabin was intact, because I hate travelling past stuff like that. Because my dad used to be a recovery man. Well, he probably still is, to be honest. It's a lot more refined on this better piece of motorway. So you've got your electric motor, you've got your battery, and you've got your engine as well. If I back off now, you will see it's now coming out and it's going into the battery. So we're keeping our battery charge at about 60%, I'd say. Now if I floor it all the way, then it'll just deplete it and then we'll start losing economy. But if you drive like this, then it'll keep literally taking out, putting in, taking out, putting in. Oh look! The Martin Mir Wildfowl Trust. The wild, wildfire, wildfowl. <laughs> Basically ducks, geese, <laughs> swans, mallards, that kind of thing. Performance wise, I'm traveling at motorway speeds and if I put my foot down, 
it'll drop a gear and it'll give me a bit of a boost. So it's nice to know that you've got some performance to get you out of trouble if you do need it. You never know when some evasive driving may become actionable. Mm. Ooh, that's a nice motorway car. BMW 5 Estate. Now we're in the roadworks section. Perfect time to discuss some of the safety. We're using adaptive now and it's set to the vehicle in front. So we're traveling at, it claims 54 miles per hour. I think it's a touch under that to be honest. 50, 51. Ah yes, Waze. Waze is the correct readout on this, isn't it? So we're actually traveling at about 51 miles an hour. Oh, it's detected the Porsche and has now started to take evasive action. And now the Porsche's pulled away, it's decided to take evasive action again. It's quite a responsive system. Easily operated as well, just with the buttons on the steering wheel. That's the thing. It may be a two, but it seems to be very well equipped. Ooh, that is a nice, was it a 718 Spider? Yes. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, back to safety. And I was just driving down the motorway then, you could see the lane key persist. And the other thing is, it's not, it's not the most overzealous system either. So you feel it pulling you ever so slightly, but it's not like some that say, nope, you're not going that way. It's a lot more gentle, but you still feel it. We've also got collision detection. And there's no doubt some other safety that we'll have to cover. We get a bit further down. So we've got 389 miles of range. Yeah, economy run just wasn't going to happen. We're still getting, <laughs> believe it or not, we're actually getting 55 mpg now. And I have been at the higher ends of motorway speeds and accelerating rather harshly too. The only reason I do slow down typically is for roadworks. But if you watch this channel, yeah, you probably know that. Whoa! The 5 Series was pretty... No, it, it wasn't in our lane. Yeah. It's okay, the Kia didn't even bat an eyelid to get back up to speed. Leaving that zone and then going back up to 70 miles an hour. Nice and easy. Bit of a blip of the throttle and you're at 70 rather rapidly. Transition's good as well. When it moves from electric into petrol and petrol into electric. The only time I have felt it a little bit hesitant is at slower speeds. But this system has been in this car for quite a while, so I expect in time we'll probably get a more refined system. Now one addition, it's got a banging sound system. It's rather bassy. I mean, yes, it's not in premium, but for what it is, I'm impressed. There's a touch of wind today, but you can't feel it through the steering wheel and the car doesn't seem to be moving left or right either. But no, this seems to be well planted. It's nice and responsive as well. Even at motorway speeds, you can do a decent swerve and it doesn't feel ungainly. It grips rather well. It's comfortable suspension, so it's not raw and it's not joggly and it's not hard either. It's it's like a, I suppose you'd say... Perfect trifecta. Yeah. So we're traveling about 70 miles an hour. Our economy has increased to 56.8. That's the interesting thing. I've been kind of bobbing between 56 miles an hour and let's say 73. And it's really helped the economy. So we've got 352 miles of range. And if Annabelle pans here, you can see how the clocks work. So currently we're in charge because we're going down the hill. Yep. Looks like we're coming into a 50 limits again for roadworks. But then you've got eco above that and power as well. So if I floor it, it climbed a bit. But that's because I can't fully floor it because the vehicle's in front. The adaptive cruise. Uh, driver assistance as well, so you do all that through here. Driving style, economical 49%. Yeah, well, I thought it'd be closer to 12, but anyway. Normal, oh, dynamic six. I let the side down big time. Energy flow as well here. Engine temperature, 
fuel economy, nice and easy to read as well. No heads up display. The economy is climbing. I've just found a really great thing. For a start, there's Kia Nero. I found a sport mode if I knock it right, and then there's some obscure vehicle in front of that. They just love traveling on motorways, seeing obscure things. Uh, I have no clue what that is. It's a Land Rover. It looks like a Defender with uh, the. Yeah, it's kind of a road. Ah, that's Bright Phoebe. Hello, Bright. How are you? Spot mode. So, to engage sport, because it said eco before, and I was like, that would imply there's a mode. You knock it right. And then you just go, what? And don't sound like a chicken. Even popping into sport periodically was still getting 57.4 to the gallon. It's only 28 miles, Annabelle informs me. So making good time. 58.3 to the gallon. We're using 2.4 kilowatts of electric power. And uh, we're traveling at, let's say, motorway speeds. And believe it or not, we're actually in EV as well. So we found about pants to the cluster. This means we're traveling on pure electric. It's been a decent drive with a decent weather. Hardly any traffic either. It's a good motorway car, this. It's also fun when you realize it has a sport. Yes. We'll be having a play with that from the toll gate and doing a bit of a launch. If you try and change lanes without indicating or it detects that you're near to a vehicle, it will go like that. Um, anyone from behind now probably thinks I've lost control, but it's merely a demonstration. Eek. I've also noticed you do get a bit of wind noise at the higher motorway speeds. Bear in mind we haven't got the music on for the first time ever. Oh dear. Grab that. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. Oh dear, bit of a burnout there. Didn't expect that, to be honest. That's quite rapid for the Nero. <laughs> My word. I <laughs> didn't expect it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Funny. That's a view and a half. So the hotel have given us an upgrade. We now have a deluxe room. A thank you, Garden Inn. Hilton Garden Inn, thank you very much. Good morning all, and we're live from the Commercial Vehicles Show at the Birmingham NEC. Full electric range of vans here. The Lamborghini Urus. I've seen many of those. Welcome to the M25 car park. Here we are at our second stage. So this is the travel lodge. And we're in Twickenham. And then tomorrow we head to the Concours of Elegance. At Hampton Court. Right in front where the Porsches are. At Hampton Court. Such a good vibe here. You can see Art Deco influences straight away. Thank you. A dealership that deals in just eco and hybrid cars. The likelihood is, with ULES and all the North Circular borders and so on, you're going to be seeing a lot more of those. Welcome to the Buntingford Classic. Pontiac GTO. Some crazy drag car. With a big bonnet bulge. And a can of Noz. The kind of thing that you would see on the Fast and Furious. We're attending the event as a guest of Joseph Floyd. So, as you can see, he's doing his shambolic shuffle down there. It's time for us to set off. So we're going to be heading to Oxford now. But then tomorrow, it's Blenheim Palace and Salon Privé. Supercar Sunday. Slam Caddy. Yes, we're back in the northwest, and thank you, Kia. It's been a rather fun road trip, and it's delivered 
on every level. And if you're wondering what we're up to next week, the Nissan Navara, green laning. See you then.